going on guys welcome back to a new video today we're going to carry over with OWASP top 10 hack the box track and in today's video we're going to go over two challenges baby auth and baby ngix atcu or whatever it is actually that so the first one baby oath the description says who needs session integrity these days and as per the description we can have a hint about the nature of the challenge so it's about session integrity so this means that we have to find out vulnerabilities that are linked to session hijacking or maybe weakly encoded cookies so we deploy the machine and we head to the virtual machine I have so go back here copy that and we browse to the main page so as you can see we have a login form again we restart we restate this over and over again when we have a login form we have various options to go through the first one we can try default credentials next we can try sql injection we can try brute force but in this challenge since this is about broken authentication we're not going to try any default credentials we need to find a way through uh, the app or need to find a way to get into the admin panel by registering a new user and understanding the authentication mechanism by understanding the authentication mechanism and how it works we can find a way or find or create a methodology how to, on how to find a weakness so create an account username test password test one two three register okay now we can log in test test one two three you are not an admin and that's it if you take a look at the page source in the page source we want to find comments but there is nothing so when we want to find weaknesses when it comes to broken authentication what do we have to do well we have to work on intercepting the session and understand all of the request and response parameters how they look like so we're gonna have to use perp suite for that so again i'm gonna use the network settings this time instead of foxy proxy I understand you guys you want to make things easy on me so I understand that some of you might suggest in the comments to use foxy proxy I'm aware of that but I'm too lazy to re-download this again so that's why I'm gonna use perp suite now okay so why don't we install this while it is actually running so let's um, foxy proxy Uh, let's install that okay options and now we go to add say perp It was 8080, right? Let's make sure that this is the correct port. Settings. Yeah, so no proxy for now. Going back here. Username, no username, no password. We're going to save that. And yeah. So back to easy things. So here, perp suite is running. Next next start perp now we're going to fire the proxy perp now perp is ready to intercept requests proxy so now right now we are logged in as the user we registered with in order to understand the authentication mechanism we may consider going back logging out logging in back again and see all of the request and response parameters starting from the moment we log in all the way to the moment when we load the main profile page 
which happens to be this page, this plain simple page. So we're going to go back and log in. Test one, two, three. Make sure the intercept is on. Login. Let's see here. So that's the request. As you can see, this is the page authentication login that is used to make the authentication process. And as you can see, we have XSRF token. We have Laravel session ID and we have PHP session ID. And this is the username and this is the password. So these are the parameters that are tied to my username and that are tied to my username. So whenever I log in, these parameters are assigned to my username. All right, so this is the cookie here, PHP session ID. That's the piece of information I first pay attention to when I, when I want to assess the authentication parameters. We have also the session ID, level session ID, and we have here the XSRF token. So since we look first at the cookie, let's take a look at the cookie here and understand the type of the um, encoding used. Cyber Chef all the time. And here we're going to use the magic. It is suggesting that this is matching ops the code not by its name from base 85. Let's remove these two. And now it is suggesting that this is base 64. So why I removed these the, the, the last two characters? Because they are part of the URL encoding. So I needed to remove them to get the correct intact base 64. So it is base 64, the type of encoding used to create the cookies. So the cookies are created, encoded with base 64, and then passed into the session, which is an incorrect way, a weak way to encode the cookies. Cookies should be encoded encrypted at the same time simultaneously um, so to prevent outsiders from understanding the nature of the cookie or the way to create the cookie so as you can see if we decode the base 64 it corresponds to this simple plain text username test and so basically the cookie is derived from the username using equal test and that's actually a basic of course the cookie will be derived from the username or will be assigned or tied to the username but the thing is here the cookie is directly created or derived from simply only the username and used or encoded with a weak encoding i mean base 64 is not sufficient to create the cookies we have to encrypt it at the same time so what does that mean what we can do here we can take this okay copy that and we go to base 64 To page 64 and here we say admin so what we're doing here we are just changing the cookie so that we pass in the cookie that is tied to the admin user so let's try that copy that and put it here forward again And this is the flag. You see what happened? This is broken authentication, or one of the ways to demonstrate broken authentication is to play with the cookies. Just try to decode the cookie. If you are able to decode the cookie, and at the same time, you're able to um, manipulate the cookie parameters, like the username, the password. Sometimes more than one parameter is used to create the cookie, not only the username. That's why you have to use username, maybe you can use the password, maybe you can use um, CSRF tokens, which need to be random. This way, you make the process of decoding the cookie and using it to create a new malicious cookie complex process. So that's the first flag. Let's take the flag and go back. Submit this. Rate the challenge. What do you think? I think the channels can is easy challenge, but we can rate it as two. Okay, 
so that's the first challenge we finished let's stop the instance refresh all right now the other one baby ngnx let's start this instance and it cleans stuff things clean the things up here so close this one let's keep these as they are we're gonna need them for the next challenge and perp it doesn't harm if you keep perp running going back here and it is up and running so if we browse to the main page here all right so let me make this easy i'm gonna sign out let's see here it's different port okay so we run the machine now on different port okay right so again we have login form and now you have actually your options are kind of expanded so you try username and password default ones you try sql injection you try um brute force and you try to understand maybe you try to register a new account and understand the authentication mechanism in order to find a way to break it now here we're going to go through the same process we're going to create a new account test test at test.com test one two three register okay let's log in test one two three and here let's turn in the intercept let's understand the authentication mechanism the same methodology we used in the previous challenge login so this is the page used for authentication it's authentication login and here we have the cookie but we don't have the session php session id here as you can see there is no like the same one we actually encountered in the last challenge all right we move on token and this is the token id or this is the token they are using to uh, actually in, in, in conjunction with the email and password to create the session so if you take this we're trying here to replicate what we did in the last challenge so we go back and we use the magic see if you can find out the encoding used here let's see it's page 64 that's perfect let's go back so from page 64 to plain text yeah this is it but as you can see it's not clear if we try to change the encoding maybe maybe the maybe there is another way maybe this is something that's encrypted right so let's try to play with the uh, encoding here try with um this one looks like as you can see there are numbers characters letters what about this one didn't work it could be encrypted guys so that's what i'm talking about that's the difference between this one and the previous one the previous one was not encrypted just decode the base 64 and there you go but this one seems encrypted so we're not going to waste our time decrypting this we're going to move on to another vector of attacking this web application going back i'm going to pass this forward and log in they also video okay test and uh, at test.com test one two three login all right so we have this page generate your ng nginx config file so it looks like here it is an nginx um, configuration file generator if you have got an nginx uh, software running to create a web server or to host a web server this one helps you in creating a configuration file so that you take the configuration file and you add it to the relevant directory after that you start your web server all right so test the port the software will run on port 80 or will listen on port 80 that's the default page that the website will be using worker connections this has to do with the performance of the web server the root directory of the web server the username here we can say the same one used for apache dubdub data turn off server tokens this is not relevant for this challenge the location where it is stored the roots the directive 
and that's it generate the configuration let's uh, pretend that this is real and we want to generate configurations to run a web server once we click on generate we get this icon it means that the configurations have been uh, have been generated so we proceed and click on here and this spawns the configuration file we created this is the configuration file of the nginx server that we're supposed or maybe we're assuming that we want to host okay that's fine but if you take a look here there are comments that have been filled without my knowledge or our knowledge in the file while creating the file we sure hope so that we don't spill any secrets within the open directory slash storage so this is a hint that in order to solve the challenge we have to go to this directory now so far so forth we are just following along with the web application right assume you can consider this as enumeration close to enumeration okay we go to storage copy that one more time hopefully it will open because sometimes it doesn't open okay so looking here we have a bunch of nginx configuration files we can take our time take a look at each one of these files but we don't have time at the same at the same time we know that this is not the way to solve the challenge so if we scroll down as you can see we have a compressed file and it is actually it looks like it is a backup file now you can go ahead and download this file how can you download this file you can right click and go to copy link jumping back to the command line we can open a new prompt here and say wget and we download this file once we do that i already did that so ls we have the compressed file here downloaded what we're going to do, we're going to say tar zvf, right, and the name of the file, v1. Once we do that, we will be able to extract the contents of this file, which happens to be one directory database. So cd to database, and there is an SQLite database. Okay, so here we're dealing with databases. Let's use SQLite browser that's built in tool in Kali Linux to open this file. SQLite browser. And in here we can go to open database and we can highlight the database that we have just extracted. And as you can see, we have the tables. Let's go over the tables here. So this is a breakdown of the tables we have. We have over, we have over six tables here, right? Um, and one of them is eye catching. It's users, right? So Normally, the users table contains information about emails, usernames, and passwords of the users registered on the site. We are interested in that since we want to break into the admin panel. So we can right click and click on browse table, and this spawns this view. So we have, as you can see, the names, the emails, and the passwords. Obviously, the passwords are hashed, so we're going to have to dehash de de them. So long story short if you take every single one of these and use hash identifier so again let's take the first one as an example which is the only one that will work in this challenge so i'm gonna only take it as an example you can take your time and try the other ones but they will not work but the same methodology applies so we take in the hash and we see here. it's actually as you can see it is md5 all of the suggestions are md5 without salt so it's pretty easy to crack okay so what do we do here we can use john the ripper or we can use hash cat so my preference is to use john the ripper so i'm going to take the hash right click copy and i'm going to go back and say um, nano hash the text uh, 
okay i understand why because i'm gonna cd back and create the file here so john and here we say hash text So it's finished, but seems like we have suggestions from hash from John Dripper. So we have to use the format option and we're going to specify MD5, row MD5. Okay, fair enough. Okay, so we have got the password. Easy. Admin, admin1. Okay, now you go back. Let's copy the other name. Username admin admin sorry the password admin admin one and this is the flag. So this challenge is about the ability to navigate through the web application, understanding the hints, and lastly, to use the password cracking programs such as Zonderupper or Hashcat to crack the hashes using, of course, rainbow tables. <coughs> so, difficulty three, and that's it, guys. So here you have it, we solved up until now 4 challenges, I'm going to finish the rest of the challenges in the upcoming videos, I hope you guys are learning and if you have any suggestion, go ahead, put it down in the video description and I will be sure to get back to you.